we need to talk about NIP. Dead last, right? And let's just look at the results because they are bad. This Amcal overtime loss, I was watching that game. They shit the bed so hard in this one that you can't see the bed for shit. It just looks like, oh, do you just sleep on a pile of shit, mate? No, no, there is a bed under all that shit. It was actually fucking one of the worst games of CS that I saw in this RMR cycle. It might be one of the worst games ever played. It's, it's mistakes. It's people peeking with their fucking guns out. It was one round. It was like an episode of fucking Police Squad. Uh, it was just so bad. It looked like gold nova matchmaking at times it was really really bad and you know obviously as i said nip kept getting into yo we're, we're in control and then boom they would fucking throw it away and it was just crazy like how bad how bad they were but okay man you're, you're nip you know you got the you got the jitters you're a bit nervous so whatever man but obviously shit I'm, I, I skipped past they lost to eternal fire but it was close and i don't hate it as i said i think eternal fire are an upset team right now but they put themselves into this position where by the way if you're nip you're nip guys and you have to beat checks notes perennial flops saw in a best of three you should be good you're in you're in the tournament for another day right they were such hot favorites for this and it was just like i just i i can't understand how this happens like 13 5 13 3 this is possibly the most embarrassing result in nip's history like no joke it, 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 it must be the most embarrassing, shameful performance uh, in, in, in the, the history of the org. Like, I, I cannot conceive of, w like, how shit your team has to be to, to not even be competitive in these circumstances. And here's the problem. These players, Esetag, Config, Head Trick, Rez, Alex. These players have all been there, done that. They're meant to be experienced. I've never seen just a more just just more insipid, couldn't care less level of performance. Which as we'll get to, we're gonna go big head in a moment, and then I'm gonna go on back to the website and show you some tweets and stuff. Cause this this segment's going on for a long time, guys. Hope you like hope you all hit nip like I do. Strap yourself in. We're gonna be talking about it for a while. What I have to say, like straight out the gate, is these players don't give a shit. Everyone always says, Oh, don't hate the players, you know, if an org mismanages things, don't put it. These players don't care. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. And you can see it in the level of performance. Now, I'll say this I excuse Head Trick for not giving a shit, right? I totally excuse Head Trick for not giving a shit. Why do I excuse him for not giving a shit? Well, let me just remind you about this little gem. It's hard for me to conceive of what it must be like to be a young player playing on a highly prestigious org, playing, you know, surrounded by people who don't speak your native language, so you're speaking in a second language, and you play a role that is the most scrutinized role, the most high value, high impact role, and that is facilitated by direct positive communication, right? That's already an impossible situation. Then let's add, I, I give I, I give the Ukrainian players so much leeway. I don't know, I, again, because I've got no frame of reference for this. I don't know what it's like to go to a tournament and just be sat there wondering whether or not your house is going to get shelled or a friend who's gone to the front lines is going to die. You know, like, and that's in your head. That, and not only is it in your head, it's like, it's, it's there after the game. Like, the game is probably the only place you maybe don't think about it. And so Ukrainian players are playing under a unique kind of, you know, p situation. So you got to fucking, you, you know, you got to give them some leeway. But I think worst of all, why the fuck as a Ukrainian player would I put my blood, sweat and tears into the NIP org after they did this? 
And if you don't know the story, because you don't read my Substack, by the way, subscribe to my Substack. It is straight fire, and all the newsworthy stuff is free. And you get an archive that goes back years. I'm adding to it all the time. Two audio podcasts for $5. It's fucking straight fire. What a deal, right? The NIP organization deleted all of their support for Ukraine. Because remember, we all, had, we all had to do it, didn't we? We all had to do the flag. Or well, we were cunts, apparently. And so, fair enough. Show support for Ukraine. What's happening there is terrible. And so, NIP did it. They wanted, you know, they did that, their logo in the yellow and blue. Because they wanted the cultural capital. But then, because they're merged with the Chinese organization and play League of Legends in LPL, which is the Riot's Chinese League, Riot China call them up and they say, listen, Enough's enough. You can't make these political statements of support for Ukraine. Please take all of them down across all of your socials. So they did. And they tried to do it in secret. But you have no secrets from me, NIP. And you never will. So I ran the story. And you can see it's there. Like, there's the deleted tweets. Right? All of it referenced. And then, ah, uh, what's that? I also got your fucking leaked Slack, or whatever the fuck it was as well, didn't I? Or Discord. Don't even know. Can't even remember. Don't even care right now. And here you go, you fucking, all your little chat where you all thought it was super hilarious. You all thought it was funny. You all made jokes about how, yeah, the Chinese regime, it is bad. And you fell in line and you complied. And you did that while you have a Ukrainian player on your books. No wonder head tricks checked out. And so, my dude, you totally get a pass from me. Richard Lewis says, it is totally acceptable for you not to care. Right? Totally acceptable. What's not acceptable? Right, well, okay. Let's talk about config. I'll go big head for a while because I want to put some emphasis on this. I'll never understand how Reddit and all these other people fucking uh, gauge what players they like or what they don't as i've said my working theory at the moment is that they're self inserts for who they would like to be or how they would imagine themselves and it seems to be if you're a pathetic weedy loser who's really shy they all love you oh god he's so cute or if you're like a good looking guy who just can keep his shit together for long enough not to act like a chad or a bully they like you because they go well if i was good looking like him and uh then i would behave nice like that as well right seems to be the the working you know seems to be how it pans out but here's the reality config is a prick i mean like there's just no getting around it everything he, like a history of being unprofessional and as i said you know, when you know what he's like behind the scenes and you know that he gets drunk at these events and he fucking, you know, let's say he's he's nearly started a fight with a member of talent I know uh, in, uh, uh, I think it was Cologne. Uh, and then obviously we all know about the, the brawl in Malta where, remember, here's what happened. He tried to get into a nightclub. The guy said, you can't come into this nightclub. He said, why, why the fuck not? Started arguing about his right to enter into a building, a licensed premises. By the way, if the doorman ever tells you you can't go in, you just turn around and walk away, you fucking melt. That's it. It's end of discussion. Do you think anyone in the history of bouncing has ever argued their way into a nightclub? You're fucking dizzy, mate. I've done that job. They only tell you to fuck off, by the way, if you're bouncing off the walls or look like you're up for a fight. So which one was it that night? So anyway, he tried to fucking argue his way in. Then when the guy said, oh, fuck off, jog on, and they pushed him down the stairs or whatever it was, he waited outside of the nightclub until the guy left, chased after him, started a fight, and then lost it. And, and then, because he broke his fucking leg, apparently couldn't play anymore, which uh, I won't even rehash that, right? Basically ended up missing an RMR for Astralis for which they did not qualify, costing them millions. And Reddit res the Reddit response to that, oh yeah, and then wrote a twit longer saying it was the worst time of my life, my wanton act of thuggery, which by the way, you know, speaking as someone who is castigated for defending himself from that type of behavior, I'm the bad guy, it it's perplexing to me. It's almost like you only play favorites and you have no standards out there in esports. 
But anyway, he then wrote a tweet long and said, I'm going to get my life together, going to get in therapy, all this other stuff. And Reddit went, oh, wow, love config. Oh, God. Thinking of you. Said he was ready to come back. Got airlifted straight into Nip, who weren't even the shit show they were right now, via the way of, I think, being a stand-in for Heroic, if memory serves me correctly. So, remember, it's okay for players to cost their employers millions of dollars. Well, you can pop heads. Sometimes. And then, by the way, when I went to Malta to hang out at an EPL event, me, multiple other people, I've even heard other people say it in their uh, video content, Thorin, etc., the supposedly reformed character was double fist in jugs of beer soon as they were out the tournament. Oi, oi! Ole, 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 ole. Well, you've learned a fucking lesson then. So, that guy doesn't give a shit. He doesn't even give a shit about his own career, which that's what perplexes me because he is such a talented player and he's had so many opportunities. And he could have been in that great Astralis lineup. And he could have been this. And he could have been that. And now what are you? Getting cut from the worst version of Nip I've ever seen. How fucking embarrassing for you. Like, you must have no pride. None at all. So, you know, I hope you've had a, I hope you've had a good time in, in CS. I hope you've enjoyed so many memories. Do you know when, like, great players and model professionals like Carrigan, they're going to open up the scrapbook when they're in their 40s and 50s, and they're going to look back on their glory years and all the trophies they won. You're going to be looking at just photos of, like, knights on the town. Oh, I remember, remember that night out. No comparison, is it? It's fucking sad. That's what that is. So, Config's got to take the blame. And here's another thing criticism of config and, and by the way i know he watches this because he, he's unfollowed me <laughs> on twitter so listen you can take this as an intervention brother or you can get upset about it i don't really give a fuck your career's done anyway it's too late now people have thrown you lifeline after lifeline and just to have a jolly up you fucking pissed it all away so anyway here's the other thing this guy is the one who runs to find HLTV, right? This is the guy that runs to find HLTV as soon as they're out of a tournament. Oh, hey, everybody. Remember when he was like, oh, I think Alexi B sticks to the playbook too much after, after that. And then said, oh, it's not what I meant. Yeah, it's never you, is it, mate? I can't even imagine having a psychology where... Right, I've gone out of a tournament. I have let a lot of fans down. I've let my org down. I have let my teammates down. I've let myself down. Let me run to a fucking news website to tell them how it wasn't me. And it's always him. You know, when we get to the Astralis bashing segment of tonight's stream, we'll talk about how cowardly it was of Blame F and the org. I mean, I'm not just putting it all on Blame to send Stare out to do the exit interview. Config just runs in oh yeah and jace makes a good point as well there was one round i think it might actually have been the last round of the game where everyone's buying like kevlar pistol and he buys a fucking bison it's just you know this guy this guy here's what he did config everyone was afraid of taking jewels and there he is oh he's so sad so sad by the way this photo is your career. This photo is a snapshot of your career. And you did it to yourself. Heartbreaking result for you. What are your reflections on that game? I don't know, honestly. I think we were just totally off team-wise and individually speaking. Everyone was afraid of taking the duels. It just felt like we were playing a brand new game. Do you think that was due to the pressure of what this game meant? No, I think it kind of showed in all the games we played, in the Eternal Fire game, the Amcal game, and also the Saw game, that we're just not good enough. And then, oh yeah, coming into the RMR, what were you expecting? We had a boot camp before we came here for a week, and I think the boot camp was really good. We learned a lot of new things and tried to change our game style a little bit and build a strap book, but it didn't really function. All oh, right, it's that old strap book again, mate. It's that old fuck. It's it's my old IGL selling old poor config down the river again, right? It's like the part that he never got is when you are a good player, right? Which he is meant to be by definition. When you are a star player, which he has been at various points in his career, it's about you, right? The expectation is on you. 
you have to deliver. And when you don't, you don't come out and do an interview going, yeah, we're all we're all shit today. Put it this way. When you listen to, to interviews from great champions when they've lost, what do they say? What do they all say? What did Simple say when that Na'Vi team was underperforming for ages and Simple would get like 50 kills in a map and they'd still lose? Right? What did Simple say? He would say, I didn't do enough. Me and Duncan on BTN, we used to fucking be... You go, this guy's crazy. He's out of his mind saying that. But that is that is what you do. That is, the, that is the fucking core of it. If you want to be the best, you have to hold yourself to an impossibly high standard and try and get there every single fucking day. And when you fail, you failed. Yeah, your teammates didn't bail you out. Yeah, they didn't do enough. Yeah, other people had bad games. You don't control any of that. You control you. You show up. But he just never got it. It never went in. He wants all of the plaudits and all of the opportunity with none of the responsibility. So fuck that guy. And Nip fans should be absolutely livid at the org. Because by the way, do you know when he left Astralis and he had all them, you know, it was behavioral problems and he was healing his leg and then he was a stand-in for heroic and he sort of did terrible, right? Nip gave him a year contract, like just boom, up fucking front, a year guaranteed trial, maybe three months, no? No. So they had to ride with that cat. And as I said, I've never seen a bigger fucking disappointment. Probably him and KNG sit on their own little island as total waste of time, throw away your career fuck ups. And it's sad. There's there's so many people that would kill for the opportunities they've had. But hey, There'll always be another one. Not this time. What else can we say about Nip and about the about players like not giving a shit? I mean, I I just I, I sort of don't even really know like what what the other guys were even doing in this lineup. S attack. Like, has there ever been a more fraudulent career than this guy? Like, for real. Me and Henry used to joke about it. You know, back in the price tag days, you know. And, you know, Hooksy, say what you will about Hooksy. Like, it's a legit achievement to get a uh, top eight with Copenhagen Flames, right? It's not enough for the G2 job, but it is a legit achievement. Not even me choking down bottle after bottle of haterade about Hooksy can fucking deny that, right? But Essatag, he rose to prominence in the online era when he went to Astralis... And he played something like, I think it was like 26 maps. And everyone was going, oh, wow, look at this, another Danish legend. And he was doing super well. And he got into that Cloud9 team, which was a disaster for a variety of reasons and was kind of like, okay. And then he's just been bouncing around tier one. And then he ends up in this nip lineup. What does he do? You know, he's a versatile player, but you know what they say about jack of all trades, master of none. And I and I just don't understand it. It's just, uh, uh, sorry, was it 36? My bad. <laughs> um, just so, like, staggering to me that this guy, again, like, the trajectory of his career just hasn't really stopped. And he doesn't do anything. Like, his stats are, are not good. Like, he just, I don't know, he's just there. He's just a player. Like, like j j just for... You know, illustration purposes. Like, you can see. You can see where CS2 is. Just fucking crazy that this guy just is allowed to just keep on going. And then, I mean, that series is, I, I say, it's just one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen. But let's talk about this guy, right? Why Alex? Like, you know, I, I, I can't. Like, I, I just don't understand it. Why did it have to be him? I need it explained to me because, as we're about to get to, they cut the problem players that I'm talking about now. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I just, I can't understand it. There, there just had to be a better option. There just had to be. But the way they talk about this guy is that there was some sort of hidden potential and all he needed was the right pieces. Like, be under no illusion, like, he had worse rosters than this and did more. But, I don't know, like, it's just different when you're using, you know, tier one players. They have their own type of arrogance and conceptualizations uh, about the games. I just don't get it. And I don't know, yeah, uh, see, Tobin in the chat, 
I watched that video too. Fucking embarrassing, by the way. Just embarrassing. They've had to come out and defend that video. We're, we're going to get to that as well. And they're like, no, no, lots of people were looking at Alex. Yeah, we've all had a look, mate. You know what I mean? But you've got to kick the tires a bit before you buy the fucking car. You understand? Uh, so I, I just don't know. The team looked directionless. The team just doesn't do anything. Nobody does anything properly on this team. It's so they're so element like the, the the fundamentals are so poor by tier one standards. And as Lorne has pointed out as well, there was a rumor that they tried to get Cadian. I don't think that was ever seriously on the table. I I, I don't think Cade I, the Cadian knows no one goes to nip. It is a black hole that just sucks the life out of you, right? You know, why would you? Like, put it this way, go get the bag in Team Liquid, even if they never win anything, even if they don't go on to be, like, a great team. Fuck it. Team Liquid look after their players, they pay you well, they give you uh, resources. Nip, they fucking get into a dispute with you over the sticker money. No, no, it was meant for us. Sorry, Nork. Right? Who the fuck would want to go there? Sorry, we, we, we're just putting this over. No, but I'm sure that belongs to me. No, 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 no. Valve told us. Valve come out. We did not tell them. No, no, it's ours. I'll get the CSPPA involved. We don't recognize the CSPPA. And no, you can't have the login to the PayPal. Like, fuck that org, man. I'm like, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to have to just do a comprehensive history of like all their fuckery. Because them not being in a major and missing out on millions, it couldn't happen to a fucking nice rogue. This is more justif justified than any of the hate on Astralis, right? So anyway, that the, after the RMR, this letter is pathetic with a capital P. You see, what they're doing now is a new cat... Right, Jonas Gunderson's gone. He's a bullshit artist. He's a grifter. He used to be the guy who was talking all the time in public and doing stupid LinkedIn posts. More on him in a Substack article later. But they've got this guy, Eric Wendell, in, right? And he is doing this thing now where he thinks, if we talk about it publicly, then it's got to be a good decision. Again, hubris. Used to work at ESL. Now he works at NIP. It's all one big fucking circle jerk, this industry right and so he's gone there and he's the head of esports whatever fucking title he's given himself and he thinks as long as it's transparent and as long as you like make it sound like you're reasonable the fans will just swallow any bullshit that you serve up and so after they cut them from the rmr these fucking players that fair enough i would have cut them as well because they don't care they they're never kissing the nip badge were they they didn't care look at this a letter from nip management right i mean look look how long this statement is just to begin with but i'll read it all for you because hell my videos fucking run for hours and hours and hours it's always a podcast with richie lou Right. At the start of the full season, we had assessed the team from multiple angles and identified team cohesion as by far the factor that most acutely needed addressing. Oh, wow. It's all, <laughs> really a team cohesion. Hey, do you want to come and in, in-game lead a bunch of fucking washed up people and, and someone with genuine problems in their lives in your second language? Yeah, all right then, yeah. Uh, I didn't, wasn't cohesive. We've, we've given a year-long contract to one of the fucking most disruptive, unprofessional players to have ever played at Tier 1. Do you want to... Do you want to... Do you want to... We'll have a real cohesive team, yeah? Ridiculous. This is a factor that fans, by definition, cannot observe. Oh, no, we could! Not that I'm a fan, but they can all see it, mate. We can see it, don't worry. But one, which everyone who's ever played a team sport will understand. Call it vibes if you will excuse me i have to fucking throw up in my mouth repeatedly for about five minutes who fucking wrote this shit call it vibes vibes you're managing a fucking professional sports team when are you gonna grow the fuck up vibes can you imagine that? 49ers, we didn't win the Super Bowl. The vibes were off. Call it vibes. Now, the condescending, patronizing asshole will explain what vibes are. As if you didn't know. When vibes are bad, everything else suffers. You lose control of the team and are left to pray that somebody pops off game after game. No amount of prax, physic prax as well, like, just say practice. 
no amount of prax, physical training, mental work or nade lineups can make up for the ability to trust that your teammates are with you when you're down 10-2 and you're losing a pistol round or that team leadership will have your back if you lose three more rounds. Right, a lot to unpack there. First of all, do you think maybe allowing, like, just one guy to run off to the media every time that you lose an important match and go, we're all dog shit? Do you think maybe that might be impacting on the vibes in the team? Because I know I'd be fucking furious. I'd play team sports. Let me give you some fucking insight, right? Do you know what I mean? If we, <laughs> I played team sports. If there was one player who was meant to be our star player, underperformed consistently, and then when the local press came along and went, oh, hello there, you know, <laughs> Richard's rugby team, you've lost again. Why did that happen? Yeah, we're all shit on this team, mate. Do you think, do you, I think, do you think that might, vibes, do you think the vibes might be fucking out of alignment from that? And do you know how you stop that happening? You actually manage your team. Where's the fucking grown-ups managing this gaggle of children? Oh, that's right. The management at NIP are also the children. And that's why this statement reads that. Then second of all, right? Oh, if you don't trust that team leadership will have your back. You just cut them after losing. I'm going to guess you didn't have their back. <laughs> you know, kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. Anyway, our first batch of changes addressed this factor directly. And we saw instant improvements the release of cs2 brought with it a roster shuffle where teams were operating with little visibility the size of the changes made to the game meant that there was no way to be certain even the top csgo players would adjust as well as other less well-established players this combined with the fact that our rmr slot hinged on retaining core players who were getting along well led us to deciding to not disrupt the roster further doing so would have required a massive leap of faith based Based on virtually no data. This is the only vaguely sensible thing in this statement, by the way. As I said right at the start of CS2, I said, I try to prepare everyone, you are going to see some players who are good really fall off, and you are going to see some players you've never heard of be really, really good. When the team finally came together after Blastfall Finals and got to practice as five, results were very promising. We saw steady improvement in preseason and went into the RMR with a mix of confidence and hope more importantly though we came into it with a clear plan for what to do if those hopes were dashed today we're introducing further changes to help us tackle two other factors of team performance consistency and how we utilize the awp keep in mind right this is their words so they've made a roster change that says is going to make them more consistent, or I think it might, just not in the way they mean, and is going to improve the AWP. Specifically saying, by the way, we're not utilising the AWP well enough, which is kind of, I think, a sneak diss on head trick, but whatever. So after taking the weekend to communicate with all stakeholders, today we're announcing the first set of changes to the team. We are parting ways with D DJL, uh, as well as our analyst, Haste, uh, furthermore, we are moving to the bench, config, esetag, and head trick. To fill the resulting void, Maxter, Silence, and Blue Phoenix with a three will be making the move to the main team from Blast Spring Showdown onward on a temporary basis. Joining them, Threat will step in temporarily as the coach. Over the past two years, Young Ninjas as a project has been crucial to, for our ability to deal with sudden roster changes, and this time is no different. Their inclusion buys us a level of flexibility that places us in a strong position for the inevitable post-RMR and post-major shuffles. So in other words, what they've said there, right, what they're really saying is... We're just going to phone it in. By the way, do you see how no one treats Blast Tournament seriously? We're just going to phone it in with three fucking Academy players, and we're going to sit, and we're going to hope we can pick up some scraps after the RMR. Well, that's reassuring. Pack it up, guys. Nip have solved it. This year, and trust me, there's memes to follow. We're not done yet. This year is going to be a disaster for NIP fans. Don't bother tuning into the games. They don't care. The org doesn't care. 
the academy players are going to give it their best shot, but invariably probably aren't going to be good enough. The only one I have any sort of uh, hopes for myself will be Max Thurs, who's had a little bit of tier one experience. But they're just going to throw their academy players in to meet their contractual obligations and then hope players they like are going to be available after the RMR ro roster, uh, sorry, major roster shuffle. That's it. That's the big plan. To get back to the prestige of 87 and 0 and all the great names they've had. Anyway, we expect the next few months to present many interesting opportunities. I mean, that's a nice way of framing getting your ass blasted in every single fucking game you turn up to play. Oh, it'll be very interesting. Can't wait for the opportunity. Blast me, daddy. It's going to be fucking great. It's going to be fucking great. It's going to be great for those guys. It's going to be really cool. A great learning experience. Hey, let's chuck you in or fucking team. It's a huge step up, but with, with an IGL who probably is already thinking, what the fuck am I doing here? What am I doing? Rez, <laughs> another chance for you, I guess. Uh, and we are well positioned to capitalize. We have a strong financial position, top tier infrastructure, and a ton more data on what makes a good CS2 player. And I'm also, like, so tired of this. This There's a handful of orgs that do this right now. We've got the secret sauce. We've got the, the, uh, the, recipe, the, the secret recipe. We've got the KFC recipe. Right? We have data. It's, dudes, everyone's got this data. You just don't, you should be using data. It's like the norm now. In fact, most good orgs have their own data company, some sort of data analytics aggregator or something. You know, ev everyone's got like uh, subscriptions to Skybox or whatever it is. I mean, like, what, you think you've come up with some fucking secret formula to find good CS2 players that no one else can do? Meanwhile, you post a video where they were going, look where Donk was a few months ago. No one had heard of him. Spoiler, everyone had heard of him. They'd heard of him since he was like fucking 15. More on that later. By the way, if Nip has all this money and top tier infrastructure and amazing data, are you going to use it anytime soon? Instead of just persistent failure? Like, uh, are you going to apply it? Does that ever cross your mind? No? All right, then. Silly me. Most importantly, though, we have an established philosophy of practicing and managing all the things that constitute vibes and a player mindset that, f that fits that philosophy. A few months from now, a new squad of ninjas will rise from the ashes and the whole team is working with a clarity of purpose that infuses us with hope for the future. Whether it all works out, we cannot predict. I'll have a bet. But we expect our fans to keep holding us to account. That is the purpose of this letter, for you all to be able to follow along as we try our damnedest to make it back to the top where we belong. Do you belong there? Do you? Do you? I'm not so sure you do. I don't think fucking d deserve means a lot in sports. I don't think belong means a lot in sports. It's about work. It's about excellence. It's about ethics. It's about philosophy. It's about drive. It's about passion. It's about hunger. I don't see a lot of that in Nip. In any of you. Um, which is the segue I'm going to use. Just in case, right? So think about that letter and the vibes. And, you know, we want you to join us and we belong back at the top. What the fuck is this? They brought Threat back in and they were like, this is, this is it. This is going to be the big news. We've got Threat back. Listen, I like Bjorn. I've said it many times. I think he's a lovely guy. I think he's got a great brain, great mind for the game. Liked him as a player. Liked working with him when he was a commentator. I want him to succeed. But what does he do? You bring him in as a general manager. He's going to stand in as a coach. I think he's a. Re I think he's a really good coach, by the way. I think he can be in the upper echelons of coaching as a general manager. That so far this has not been great, has it? And anyway. This is his tweet. So remember, we're going to try our damnedest to get back to the top where we belong. Let's check in with your GM. What does your GM think about the ascent to the great mountain of success? Yeah, has he got his, has he got his uh, climbing gear ready, has he? Has he fuck? We know that from the outside, it's hard to see where we are, where we are in the process of bringing Nipsey S back. The timeline is clear. In January 2025, we have to be competitive again. That's the deadline? 
to be competitive? To not even be winning? A year? Bro, like, you do realise Twitter has an edit function now. <laughs> There's an, you've got an hour to edit this. Why have you let it stand? Why? Why did you press send? Why did you redeem? I just... Why did you redeem the cards? I just can't believe it. I, like... I, optically, this is such a fucking bad luck, dude. This is esports. A year in esports is a fucking eternity. Teams rise and fall. It's considered a dynasty if you win consistently for a year. Like, what are we talking about? I mean, there's, there's another major this year. <laughs> Can't. Why have you said this? It's so stupefyingly ridiculous. So, w we have to be good by th the first major of 2025? We're not even going to be good for the second major this year in China? Jesus, this is terrible. For real, Eric, because I, I, know, I know you will be watching. Let me help you. Let's have a meeting, right? I'm going to explain how language and public perception are linked. And I, I will really keep it simple for you, but, but I want to help, because this is sad. This is fucking pathetic to publicly say this, particularly you're putting out a letter and then it's like, we're going to do our damnedest and there's exciting opportunities. Actually, we're going to rise from the ashes. And yeah, but uh, all of that's happening in 2025, by the way, because <laughs> like, fuck this year, we're dog shit. Like, I just can't do it. I can't with this org. But here's the problem. You know the saying. Uh, fish rots from the head down. It's become a very popular phrase. I don't know why. Probably got used in Game of Thrones or something and all the dickheads snapped it up. But it used to be a very old adage. It was the type of thing that my granddad used to say. But everyone says it now. That's good. It's a good saying. Makes a lot of sense, right? So, Eric is something. <laughs> He's really something. He was tweeting. And I know, like, look, every all tweets are bad tweets, right? All tweets are bad tweets. But there are bad tweets, and then there are unbelievably bad tweets. And Eric's done an unbelievably bad one. And it's of particular interest to me. Here he is. One of the worst things that ever happened, probably to the universe, is... Yeah, by the way, you know, the whole point of Twitter was you just put quick shit posts out. 240 characters. Yeah, let's just... Let's just in, make you do a twit longer on every single fucking post now. Uh, everyone's talking bollocks. Uh, so much more bollocks. Magnitudes more bollocks. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, here's, here he is, Eric Wendell. Some evening thoughts incoming. Uh oh. The, the intrusive voices are winning. Don't press send. That's lesson number one in the course. Hire me. Never press send. But anyway, some evening thoughts in coming. Didn't plan to write this. Well, <laughs> yeah. But it's easier than going back and replying to every individual tweet from the past few days. See it as a transparent brain dump from a lifelong NIP fan and NIP employee. To begin with, I was fascinated by the amount of people celebrating us bombing out of the RMR. Not only the amount but also the size and importance of some people participating in it. T talking as a fan myself and someone who was outside of NIP not long ago, it's hard to summarize where this level of gloating comes from. Is it old management? Is it the old, old management? Is it NIP scamming player? Stories. Is it the rebranding? Is it the intent international roster? Is it Saudi? Is it China? Is it the weather? Eric, blood. Let me explain it to you, right? Every single org in CS owes NIP a debt. The old, old management, as you put it, right, back in the Fisku heating days, which many people won't remember, they professionalized a, a team in a game where nobody believed it had a future and that it wasn't worth professionalizing in. Keep in mind that the Mouse team, then Mouse Sports, that won the last source Copenhagen Games in 2012, beating alternate attacks in the final, that team were offered 400 euros a month 
to go professional in CSGO. And so they quit just as they were peaking. Probably the last of the great UK lineup. It was a mostly UK lineup with Rattlesnake in it. When the old, old management of NIP came in, they said to get right, Forrest, Fifflaren, Freiburg, exist. They said, we're going to give you a salary and we're going to work really hard. We're going to give you, a, you know, a training facility and we're going to give you as many, way more resources than any other team happened. Everyone else was sitting on the fence. Nip went and did it. And understand what it must be like for literal legends in the game. Get right, Forrest, 1.6, certainly had a bigger salary in 1.6 than they did at the start of CSGO, right? F Fifth Lauren, franchised player in the CGS back in 2007. Freiburg, who was, at the start of CSGO, probably the best rifler in the world. I know it's hard for people to believe, but... If you had him in the pickup games, all the pros were in 2012, 2013, well, mostly 2012, you you just won. Everyone thought Freiburg was cheating in CSGO because pros are going to pro. And then Exist, who was going to essentially shoulder the burden of being an IGL, had had relative up and down success in 1.6, but super nice guy, very professional. They all sucked it up, put their heads down, and played... Uh, and everybody thought very games were going to dominate because CS goes like sauce. But and they didn't, and they won, and they kept winning. And every time they kept winning, they would be out there, the media promoting the game. They they got a McDonald's fucking sponsorship. They did, you know, they they brought in like uh, t t Talia and uh, fucking Benki, all these sponsors. They went to every event, even the events they weren't competing at. They would go to local lands and do signings and meet people. And they generated, they generated excitement about a game everybody thought was going to die. They thought it was dead on arrival. And the story of 87 and 0 is like, in all of my time in esports, it's one of the most epic things. Even the way it ended is fucking epic. The way the players breathed a sigh of relief and were smiling as they lost because that unbelievable weight of expectation, it was finally over. And then think about fast forward to 2014, get right on his knees, they finally get the major crying. Con you know, drenched in confetti none of the fanfare matters that's nip to me an actual fan of the game and that's why you have any fans in the first place you built it on their backs but then what did old old management do you whipped those fucking guys off old old management and then suddenly the stories about nip they're not about 87 and 0 and uh, epic get right and forest and all this it's about didn't you scam them didn't you take their sticker money didn't you go bankrupt? Didn't one of your owners run away to Thailand? Didn't Heaton get in trouble? And this is all anybody talked about. Meanwhile, the players were going through this new iteration, trying to sustain success, handled it like fucking pros the entire time. Never went public, never threw the org under the bus, never lashed out at fans, never did anything less than their obligation. And eventually you got back to sort of being vaguely competitive in a second iteration in the post-Fifth Lauren era. Then comes the new management. And by the way, when you talk about old management, Eric, Hitchum Chaheen has been there through all of this. And then what happened? Well, where to begin with Nip? Oh, you sticker moneyed them again. Fifth Lauren owed money, owed backdated prize money. I I I'll ignore the PayPal charity thing. I guess we just never get to the bottom of that. I will leave that one way back in time, right? Fifth Lauren comes on my podcast, does a whole show about it. He still owed money. He had agree verbal agreements with Hitchum. He blames Hitchum. Hitchum's still your guy. He's still the guy running Nip. Then there's all the fucking bullshit with Device. Whereas I've said, people seem to forget. A lot of people think like Device just didn't want to come back and play in the Nip team before he went back to Astralis. The handling of that was terrible. It was just that under the Swedish law, you could essentially get a stipend to pay his part of his salary while he was on sick leave, as long as he was on sick leave. So fuck it, if it's not going to work out, I won't even get into as well the 40% packet loss where you strong-armed a tournament operator into giving you a replay you absolutely did not deserve and would not have got in any other circumstances to fuck over Anonymo. 
Your management did that. Your guys did all of this. And as I said, in the background, we're talking about sticker problems. And then what happens? There's another story about the Rio fucking capsule, the cancelled one. And how you pocketed all of that, despite there being supposedly contractual agreements that the players were entitled to a share. And there's talk of lawsuits and bringing in the unions. And you don't care, you say, we're not recognising any of that. Fuck them. Then, just last year, I break a story about you employing a fucking convicted sex offender to work at your org. A guy, literally, conv like a celebrity that was convicted of sexual offences. I mean, a Finnish celebrity, so I mean, make it out what you will, if there's such a thing. But convicted of filming women against their will, having sex, and then sharing the videos, and you hire him as a, wait for the punchline, videographer. And his first project, doing a video on the women's team at NIP. You cannot make up how much of a fucking clown show your org is. And, I hate to break it to you, while we can laugh about that because it's so absurd it could be a comedy sketch, you have to acknowledge you put people at risk. And that I will never tolerate. Because for as much as I hate this industry, young adults do not deserve to be chewed up by the scum that fucking infest it. And then, as I just showed you, you also have proven you stand for nothing. You merged with China to get a team in the LPL because you thought it would be good. Jonas Gunderson on LinkedIn bragging about how, oh, we've opened an office in Abu Dhabi. Isn't it great? The same guy tweeting at PGL, hire more women. Well, how are, how are those women's rights in Abu Dhabi, mate? Fucking refresh my memory, you hypocritical arsehole. And when you have to comply with one of the new regimes you're in bed with you delete tweets on demand that express support for people literally dying to an invasive force in their country do you get it now why your org is despised has it gone in and i want to add when you use the word stories here's another lesson on language you cretin when you say stories, you are downplaying the reality that they are fucking facts. And I know they're facts because I reported on about 80% of it. That is why people gloat when you miss out on millions. Because we can't be sure you're not going to pocket more of the sticker money. That's why. Maybe that's why your players don't care. So I hope that's clear. I hope I've spelled it out for you. You have mismanaged, not and not you specifically here, Eric, my old chum, but NIP management, you have mismanaged not only what should have been the flagship brand for this game for years to come, you have also mismanaged the lives, the reputations and achievements of Hall of Fame level players and done a disservice to all of the fans that aspirationally bought in on what you were doing. There is no reason to like NIP. This, my friends, is why I am starting to believe in karma in 2024. Between this and Astralis, this is great. Now we'll just continue with the rest of the bullshit. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit of everything. I don't think anyone really knows. I know. What I do know is that I decided to make Nip better from the inside, and I will keep doing that every day. There are so many great people working at Nip, and I urge you to reach out to the players we just benched and ask them what they thought about their stay in Nip. What is this, bro? What are you running right now? Hey, if you think we're bad because of all that bad stuff we actually did do in the past, why don't you reach out to the people we just cut and they won't say anything bad about us because, you know, we like owe them money and stuff. What is that? What kind of insipid management it, it, it says publicly, if you think we're bad guys, talk to the, we've just cut these guys. They've got no reason to say anything good about Ask them. Ask them what they say. It, it's like, you know, if I was on a fucking Tinder date, and, you know, it wasn't going well. Uh, like, I'm not going to say, listen, I know this date hasn't been great, yeah? But, like, talk to my exes. I've, I, I really pull it out the bag on Valentine's Day. You seem like a fucking weirdo, buddy. Like, what? what's that? What is that? Will there be things we could have done better? Absolutely. 
but there will also be things we are among the best in the world at. I know, I know, that's hard to believe, but you wouldn't believe the crazy stories we hear from different corners of esports. So, first of all, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep breaking down his nonsense, right? You know, sorry, <laughs> this is the stream, this is why you're here, it's, it's going to keep going and going. So, first of all, there are things we are best in the world at. I agree. Squandering fucking potential. Wasting opportunity. Yeah, you're right up there. Terrible PR messaging. Oh, you're great at it. But do you see what he's done there? And he probably doesn't even realise he's done it. We are the best in the world at these things because other orgs are dog shit. <laughs> I'm jo Hey, listen, I'm John Jones. I'm the best fighter of all time. Uh, I haven't lost a fight in the midget division. <laughs> You're fucking out of your mind typing this. You're out of your mind putting this out there publicly. I cannot believe what you're saying. I cannot believe what you're saying. Like, and it's there. It's there. Like, it's real. Like, transparency is one thing. But you still have to be a little bit, like, manipulative and crafty and have a bit of guile about what you're saying. Talking about that, transparency. So... As you might have noticed, we're trying this transparency thing out. And it seems like it's tricky. <laughs> oh, I'll say. It's not tricky to be transparent, but it's really tricky to see the benefit when people twist what you say against you. Bro, welcome to the internet. Thank you. Right, we're not twisting anything, mate. You are saying appreciably stupid things. And by the way, another little lesson for you for free. When you have gobshite managers like you, it doesn't help the players. If I'm a player, I'm thinking about joining an NIP. I'm looking at this. I mean, if I'm one of the smarter players, most players don't operate on this kind of level, to be fair. But I'd be looking at that and going, am I going to have to deal with this dickhead talking after every result? Put it this way. You know, if you were to ask GamerDoc now from Evil Geniuses, if you were to ask her if you could go back in time, would you not say the Talent Pipeline tweet? She would 100% say yes. Right? And she'll always have to live with that. <laughs> like, so I know, like, you talk too much. Stop it. It doesn't help the players. But I guess the problem I've noticed is that we can never truly be 100% transparent. So instead, you give as many percentage transparency as you can to stay within contractual limitations and to not make any third party annoyed. But when you do that, people end up with a snapshot of transparency, which can be really confusing. Two interesting examples, both from the Roster Maniacs video. There was a narrative created that Nip didn't know who Donk was because I said something along the lines of new kids will come up all the time in CS2. Just look at Donk. No one knew who he was just a few months back. Since I have the context of how well our CS staff scouts, it didn't occur to me that without this context, people can actually misinterpret it. This is one of those things, mate. Where I hate to break it to you, the context is irrelevant. Well, it's not irrelevant, but if you did know who Donk was month beyond a few months ago, then surely you would say a, a year ago. Look, at, look, a year ago. No one's going to complain about that, by the way, if you say a year, right? You get away with that one, but you didn't. You said months, and so here's the issue with that. First of all, it's not true. He has been one of the most touted talents for, for as I said, since he was about since he was fifteen. And the the sentence directly shows me and anyone that's capable of reading or listening in this case that actually you didn't. You didn't. You're not talking to the people doing the data research. They knew. The players knew. You didn't. Otherwise, you wouldn't have said what you said. We can all have M you know miss speaking moments and slips of the tongue but that's what you said in a video you curated edited and released there is no way you thought you misspoke so you didn't just own it oh you won't next up there are a hundred reasons we picked alex's igl <laughs> oh boy oh boy but the video can only be so long so one of the few reasons that was mentioned was because we wanted to keep head trick. While this was true at the time, it was only one out of a hundred reasons. But the video probably framed it too much as the reason. Transparency trickiness strikes again. If there were a hundred reasons as to why 
you picked him. You would include multiple reasons in the video, but you didn't. The reason you committed to the public record was that you wanted to keep head trick, right? The player you've now cut. Now, again, because I think about things I say, and I think about things other people say, and it's a crazy concept, I know. How do you think Alex feels that that is the narrative around him? Hmm. Doesn't matter what you say behind closed doors, mate. This is what you have committed to the public record. We only, see, that's what, that's the word fans will add in their brain if you only include one reason. We only signed Alex because we wanted to keep head trick. Huh? Well, if I'm your new shiny IGL that apparently everyone wanted and there's a hundred reasons for me to be here, but the general public think I'm some shit, cheap, penny-pinching roster move that you only made to keep the AWPA happy and useful. I'm pretty pissed off about that, actually. You've undermined me, undermined me there, undermined me there, right? You've undermined me there. And the fans will seize on it. And I am going to have to hear that all the time. So great job. You are crushing it on the transparency business. Really are. So yeah, absolutely some learnings there. But we will keep trying to be transparent. I really enjoy sharing insights and explaining what we do and why. And no matter if hate or love comes out of it, I do think all of esports does benefit from a little more transparency and honest people. Talking about honest people, let's shortly talk about the amazing people we just had to say goodbye to in NIP. So obviously, you know, the assistant coach and analysts get thrown under the bus. Like, yeah, these guys are great, super hard workers. Essatag, it's true what they say. The player everyone needs, but no one deserves. Putter will do anything for his team. He will take any role, any job, and just get it done with... Uh, with I think and hope that Putter will go for IGLing in the next part of his career. I think he could truly excel at that. By the way, why is he having to do all these things? Why is he having to do anything? Like no cohesion, no consistency. He just does he just does everything, right? All the time has to. Yeah, and by the way, also, yeah, I agree. I can see him turning up as an IGL. Why not? Why fucking not? Why not extend the career, the most ridiculous career of all time? Why not? Config. And for Krella, it's the opposite. <laughs> it's not true what they say. One of the most happy and loving people I've ever worked with. Apart from that time, I said his tattoos were shit and he smashed my head in. One of the most happy and loving people I've ever worked with. We'll miss this guy a lot, and I must say, I'm afraid he will become a he become crazy consistent and beat us on the server in the near future. Eric, let me do you a favour and assuage those fears, because he's never been consistent at any fucking point in his career. He's his own worst enemy. He's a total fucking flake, and he pisses on every opportunity he gets. You can rest easy. You can rest easy at night knowing that Config is never coming back to wreck NIP. You're safe. And then head trick. Oh, okay. Being part of a player's first time tier one journey is something else. It feels like Danya has been growing up with us. Has it been the easiest CS upbringing? No. He's also been through a lot of different teammates and leaders, and it was just time for a reset. He still has all the tools to be a great AWPA. One day. <laughs> Not now. He's shit now, though. Yeah. All right. Wicked. Cheers, mate. Nice one, Eric. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Fucking cheers. See what I mean about the sneak diss on head trick? Something happened there. So I'm, I'm just telling you now. It's 100%. I'll take that to the bank. The banks. 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 I also hate this. Uh, they did this when they were doing all the fucking gaming layoffs. I've lost so many amazing, brilliant people, and they're so talented, and they're so amazing. Do you want to keep employing them then? But we just we just can't. We just can't do it. You sure you don't want to? Because it sounds like you've just made Config sound like the best fucking player ever to have at an org. Like he's happy and loving and amazing, and if he finds consistency, he'll beat anyone. We're not keeping him, though. Why? Uh. Actions. Words.
then we'll just end with the bullshit uh, and then we're done with the nip bashing so one last ride it's like the undertaker after 9-11 when he started when he <laughs> started rolling 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 that's what we'd get ready guys it's one last ride i don't even know what that last part was some kind of high school summary of my old classmates maybe i'm stepping outside some zone of what i should be communicating well we live and learn it was just it was just cringe mate Nip is entering a new era, and I don't mean this in a LinkedIn exaggerate kind of way, but we really are. Or maybe more of an old era. We have some of the best CS staff members in the business. People like, and it lists them all, old Mr. I'm having a year off. <laughs> and more. And in the coming months, they will actually finally be allowed to do things from scratch. All their expertise and knowledge in one team. Our team your team being a team that people gloat at or not it's been reassuring and humbling to see that as soon as it was made clear that ninjas in pajamas is truly being rebuilt the legacy and history does mean something it probably means everything we have top tier players and coaches reaching out showing interest and being curious about what's next the question everyone is asking now is what is our next step well whatever it is we will keep being transparent and keep inviting you on the journey you are welcome to gloat and you are welcome to cheer us on most important is that you support esports and cs we have a new era of cs and an old titan in nip soon climbing back to the top and then hashtag go ninjas Right, what's the over-under on them actually building a successful team in CS2? Like, for real. Like, how far behind are NIP, actually? <laughs> like, in terms of, like, all the other orgs they'd have to catch up. FaZe, under new ownership now. Fucking G2. Uh, I'm not even talking about, like, Spirit, Virtus Pro, Na'Vi potentially cooking. Falcons might get their shit together. Like, where do you think you are? You are the EG of Europe. So, put it this way, you're not telling a lie when you say, we are rebuilding. But that's because there's nothing left. You are at absolute rock bottom at this point. Like, it cannot get worse for what you were to what you are. This is sad. It's like Artie Lang falling off the sobriety wagon for the thousandth time as his cocaine-filled nose falls to pieces in real time. That's where you are, the arty lang of esports. It's fucking sad. And it's so sad, and you've done it to yourself so many times, despite so many chances, no one even wants to reach out and help anymore. That's why everyone's gloating, my dude. Actually fucking crazy how much you have fucked up a great thing and by the way i know enough about the guys who were still there because remember hitchham's not gone anywhere guys you got rid of jonas but hitchham's still there hitchham's still calling the shots you're gonna fuck up again there's gonna be another scandal or you're gonna do something outrageous something's gonna come to light it's just in your dna to be shitty and when it happens you won't be transparent about it you won't talk about it just like you call all of the things you did stories 